In the main video about screen rendering, I just glossed over color math because it's pretty complicated. But I figured it should probably be explained in more detail because there are so many options and settings involved with it. The five inputs to color math are the main and subscreen, the color window, the fixed color, and the color math settings. But in this video, we'll take a step back and look at all of rendering, which has three main inputs, the layer data, the window data, and the render settings. The layer data includes the data for each of the four backgrounds and the data for the object layer. The window data includes both windows, since there are two of them. And the list of settings is pretty expansive. The through main and through sub registers, the through main window and through sub window registers, the window one and two enable flags for each of the six layers, the window one and two in or out flags for each of the six layers, the window combination logic for each of the six layers, the main and sub color window switches, the BG3 high priority switch, the fixed color, the fixed color subscreen switch, the color math enable flags for each of the six layers, the addition subtraction switch, and the half enable flag. Keep in mind that the entire process that is about to be described is carried out for every pixel on the screen. So the layer data is a pair of values that corresponds to what priority level the given tile has and what color the pixel is. In indexed color mode, this means a 15-bit color fetched from CG RAM, and in direct color mode, this means an 11-bit embedded color value. The window data is a single bit for each window that corresponds to whether this pixel is inside or outside each window. All of the color math switches and flags are 1 or 2 bit values found in the PPU's hardware registers. Let's walk through the entire rendering process for one pixel. We'll start with the windows. The window data, a single bit, determines which side of the window it is on. It is inside the window if the X position of this pixel is greater than or equal to the window's left position and less than or equal to the window's right position. This flag is split six ways for each of the six layers. Each layer's flag is put through a switch that is controlled by the window enable flags in registers hex 2123 through 2125. If at any point the window data becomes disconnected, the window is effectively disabled. Note that there are actually six switches here, one for each line. Only one will be shown for simplicity. The six flags are then put through an optional inverter which is controlled by the window in or out flags in the same registers. Like the name of the logic gate itself, this will invert the window, causing pixels outside to be inside and vice versa. The windowing pipeline so far exists for both windows 1 and 2. To wrap up the windowing pipeline, the two windows' data are merged together per layer. The logic used to combine them is either an OR, AND, exclusive OR, or exclusive NOR, which is determined per layer by the window logic settings in registers hex 212A and 212B. The combination logic also handles the case when one window is effectively disabled, allowing the other to pass through unaffected. If both windows are disabled, the pixel is determined to be inside the window by default. At this point, the data per layer represents if this pixel should be treated as being inside or outside the window. Put this on hold, and let's switch over to the layer data. We have five data lines, one for each of the background layers and one for the object layer. The background lines contain a color and one bit for priority, and the object layer has a color and two bits for priority. Each of the five lines are split two ways, one for the main screen and one for the subscreen. First, all of the lines pass through an initial switch that is controlled via the through main and through sub registers at hex 212C and 212D. If the layer data is prevented from propagating forward, the layer is effectively disabled and the color data is treated as transparent. Next, all of the lines pass through a second set of switches. These are all controlled via the window data we covered earlier. This means that if a pixel was determined to be inside the window, the layer will effectively be disabled and treated as transparent. These lines are actually put through a switch themselves, which are controlled by the through main window and through sub-window registers at hex 212E and 212F. 
This acts as a more abstract enable switch for the window, since it controls both windows at once after they are merged. In order for a layer to be affected by a window, it must be set in the window enable registers and the through window registers. The sixth output of the windowing pipeline comes into play later on. Next, the layer data that is enabled and outside the windows is put through the priority circuits. These circuits take in all of the layer data as input and outputs the one that has the highest priority, the one that is on top of all of the others. These circuits also take into account the BG3 high priority switch, which gives high priority tiles on background 3 the highest priority in background mode 1. After these circuits, the priority data is no longer needed, but the main screen still needs to know what layer the output came from. If all of the layer data is transparent for this pixel, the priority circuit will output CGRAM color 0 for the main screen and the fixed color for the subscreen. The output from the subscreen priority circuit can be forced to the fixed color via the subscreen fixed color switch in register hex 2130. This will effectively disable the entire subscreen and replace it with a single color. The layer data, now trimmed down to a single color value each, gets put through one more switch, controlled via the sixth window data line. The sixth window data line is sent through, or can be overwritten, or inverted by the main and subscreen window switches via register hex 2130. These registers are mainly used when the fixed color is enabled instead of the subscreen, since the subscreen fixed color switch is later in the pipeline than the window settings. This is why the sixth window data line is commonly referred to as the color window line, even though it really applies to everything. Finally, the two screens are merged in the screen addition subtraction circuit. First, the layer identification data from the main priority circuit is fed into the selection circuit, which also takes in the six color math enable flags from register hex 2131. This circuit checks if the layer data going into the color math circuit should be mathed or not. It outputs the enable flag corresponding to the layer identification data. This is fed into the color math circuit along with the addition subtraction switch and the half enable switch. If math is disabled, the data from the main screen overrides the subscreen data. But if math is enabled for this pixel, the color data from the subscreen is added to or subtracted from the main screen color data per color component. If the half flag is enabled, the result is then cut in half. This turns out to be the average when adding. If the result is greater than 31, it maxes out at 31, and if it's negative, it is just set to zero. Additionally, if one of the screen's data is transparent, the other screen is put through without doing any math. If both screen's data are transparent, then the resulting color will be black. To get a better picture of what this flowchart represents, let's walk through it with a visual example. The entire screen will be shown at once, but remember that this flowchart applies to pixels. Here we have two windows. White corresponds to being outside the window, and black is inside the window. It's split six ways and can be enabled and inverted on each separately. Then each of the six pairs are combined. If both windows are enabled, they can be combined in four different ways. Each of the four backgrounds and the object layer are split two ways, one for the main screen and one for the subscreen. They can be disabled or have their corresponding window applied to them. The layer data is combined, leaving just the highest priority data through. The main and subscreens have their transparency converted to CGRAM color 0 and the fixed color respectively. The subscreen can be swapped out for a full screen of the fixed color if that setting is enabled. Now, the color window can be applied to the entire main or subscreen. It can mask out the entire screen, just the window, inverted, or none at all. The main priority circuit also outputs what layer the pixels belong to before merging. Here they are color coded. Back color, layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, objects that use palettes 0 through 3, and objects that use palettes 4 through 7. Only objects on the main screen that use palettes 4 through 7 can be mathed. Palettes 0 through 3 will never have it enabled. 
The select circuit creates a mask based on which layers have math enabled. Then, the subscreen is masked away using the selection mask, and the remaining pixels are added to or subtracted from the main screen. Finally, we'll take the examples shown in Part 3a and look at the main and subscreens, the window, and how they are combined to form the final picture. The first is the transparent water in A Link to the Past. Here are the background layers 1 through 3 and window 1. Background layer 4 and window 2 are not used. The main screen gets layers 2 and 3 and the object layer, while the subscreen gets the water on layer 1. The window is enabled only on layer 1, so the water gets clipped away and only part of it gets shown. The main and subscreen are formed. BG3 high priority is enabled, and CG RAM color 0 and the fixed color are both black. Here is the color coded selection map for the main screen. Color math is set to add and half and is only enabled on layer 2, so the water will be translucent and will only show up on top of layer 2. Parts of the main screen that are objects or layer 3 will appear on top of the subscreen, which includes the HUD here. The second example is the disco ball in Super Mario World. Here, all of the layers are put on the main screen, and the fixed color is used instead of the subscreen. The fixed color is set to a middle gray color. The color window is enabled, which leaves the subscreen with a transparent area in the middle where the light shines. Subtraction and halving is the way the two screens are merged. The area where the light shines is normal brightness, since the subscreen was transparent and no math was performed, but the surrounding areas are darkened. And the third is Squawk's flashlight in Donkey Kong Country. This one is actually very interesting. The main screen contains only layer 3, which is a pure white screen. Everything else is put on the subscreen. You'll notice that everything looks like the color has been inverted. This is so that when the subscreen is subtracted from the main screen, which is all white, the original color will be produced. Layer 3 has the window applied to it, and color 0 from CG RAM is a mid-gray color, so the transparent area turns gray. Finally, the subscreen is subtracted from the main screen, which means everything in the gray area is much darker than the white area. Thanks for watching. Perhaps there will be a part C that explains how color math works in the higher resolution modes, since it has its quirks.